everybody. It's great to be here. I'm Nadine Schulbert, Director of Design at WET. Most of you design experiences for people in one way or another. So imagine going to work in the morning and instead of working with an industrial material or um, a digital interface, you're given a set of natural elements in constant flux, malleable, that can be shaped into an endless variety of forms. That's the medium we design with. We design with water. Water has its own will. When you design with it, you have to develop an understanding for that will. You can never fully control it, but you can entice it to behave a certain way. And we play with this behavior and with its movements, kind of like a musician playing an instrument. And in doing so, we shape and sculpt water into incredible forms and we transform it into something you've never seen before. And then we immerse you within it. And suddenly this familiar element, water, becomes magical and new. So when you experience a wet feature, it's as if you have experienced water for the first time. Um, you see it in a new light and your relationship to it is changed. There's incredible power in water that brings people together, that opens them up and inspires them. And we use this power and the magic we find in water to connect people and to transform the everyday into extraordinary experiences. projects, everything about them was conceived and actually made by us here in Los Angeles with about 300 people. We have a totally integrated approach to our work in the sense that we control every process that is required to create these features. From the conceptual design to the engineering of the fountain's infrastructure, you know, the, the system that makes it work to the development of all the components that go into a water feature, as well as their manufacturing. And 
finally, the installation and the fountain's choreography. And by integrating all of these different parts, you know, the design, the system, the hardware, the software, it gives us a creative freedom that we wouldn't have otherwise. So, for example, if uh, in one of our designs we want to create um, t columns of water rising into the sky with fire dancing inside them, then we develop a technology to do so and we engineer a device that will handle this and we manufacture it ourselves down to the smallest detail, including its brain. <laughs> or, for example, if um, the underwater lights available on the market are not bright enough to illuminate our work, then we create our own set of underwater LED lights. But really what's most important about this integration of the different disciplines and processes is that people with different backgrounds and different mindsets can collaborate. And together we come up with ideas and find solutions that we would not be able to find otherwise. And that allows us to push the boundaries of what we can achieve with water. And it's really the foundation of our work. So let's have a look inside WET. This here is the design studio. This is where I spend most of my time. And this is where every project originates, where we develop the design of what a water feature will look like. I'm sure you're wondering, where are these fountain designers coming from? You know, there is no formal education in that field. Well, uh, we have people from a variety of backgrounds, uh, from architecture and landscape design, industrial design and entertainment design even graphic design. And some of our designers have dual backgrounds. Uh, we have an architect who's also a dancer, a textile designer who's a musician. And in this space, we sit side by side, engineers and physicists and special technology gurus so that we can collaborate along the design process. When we start a project, we think of the overall role that water will play in it. Now, what is the precise story it will tell? What is its character? What mood does it set? And how will people interact with it? What will inspire them? Um, in one of our current projects, water and fire are intertwined along a journey. And they tell the story of how clashing forces finally find a way to coexist in balance. Designing a water feature means designing a space, an experience, and a performance. And our designers do all of that. So think of it, a design for us is never static. When you design a form, you constantly also think of it as movement and dance. So for this, we sketch, and brainstorm, and build quick study models. And we try to carve out some time to play and explore. And of course, we study the site in which our work takes place very carefully, because we want people to interact with it the right way, and we want our work to, to really bring a space to life. In almost every project, we're faced with recurring challenges such as the water splash. You know, the water always tends to want to go places or further than we would like it to go. 
or wind is an important factor. Um, different sites have different wind conditions and the water is extremely susceptible to it. Wind can just take it away, like the phones. <laughs> And, and um, the structural requirements. Uh, for example, here, we are designing this liquid canopy under which people will walk. Well, how do you bring water up there in an unobtrusive way so that this ethereal quality of the water ceiling is maintained? So imagination can only go so far. And very quickly in the design process, we need to see what our ideas actually look like. And this, we do in our idea playground. This is the fun place. This is where we play with the actual elements, where ideas get mocked up and tweaked and tinkered with and adjusted until we feel that the design is right or we scrap the idea. Uh, but what it allows us is to um, really understand the water's behavior, the quality, for example, of the water's flow, the surface it has, the texture. How far does that splash go? What is the sound that the water makes? And how does the air feel when you stand next to it? Which are all things that matter to us in developing an experience. Sometimes these mock-ups are really quick and crude. And sometimes they're very elaborate and require a lot of planning. When we come up with ideas that we have no clue on how to implement, like that would require new technologies, for example, creating these giant water bubbles with bursts of fire inside, then we simulate the effects that we're after. And we run the idea by our special technology gurus. This grumpy guy is one of them. <laughs> And um, these are people that are really good at quickly figuring out if an idea is feasible, you know, without um, any engineering calculations, just by understanding the laws of physics. And if there is a potential, then we do a proof of concept. And that's how innovation takes place during the design phase. Throughout these mock-ups, we learn and we adjust our designs. And sometimes we discover something that no amount of ideation could have led us to. Like in this project here, we're designing this giant rain ring and we were wondering how to illuminate it until we discovered how this, this rain ring could turn into a cylindrical canvas by projecting onto it and how beautiful that was. So we take these gems that we find and we use those to finalize our designs. From here, the project goes through the entire engineering, engineering of the system, the manufacturing of the components and the installation phase. And it culminates in the fountain's choreography. And that's the most rewarding part. This is where a designer can see his project completed in full circle. You know, from the initial design gesture to seeing the project develop step by step and influencing the development, and now to being able to bring a project to life through choreography, you know, and finally see these movements that we had envisioned on it. So when you choreograph a water feature, it's very similar to choreographing a ballet. You have an overall vision for the piece that you want to create, and then you work with individual dancers to shape and, and sculpt the movements. So for this, our designer uses a tool uh, that we call Virtual Wet. It's a software that we have developed that understands the physics of water and of our water devices and can simulate gravity and even the effects of wind. Um, and with this software, we can control every single device in a water feature and tell it exactly what to do and when. Now, it's very, very time consuming, so it takes about 40 hours of work to just create one minute of choreography. And since none of these choreographic movements are computer generated, you could give the same piece of music to 10 different choreographers, and you would have 10 totally different shows. 
So let me show you a piece that we've created for this project. This is the Dubai fountain, which is the largest choreographed fountain in the world. And you see how it looks um, as, a, as a show developed in virtual wet and then implemented on the actual fountain. Water is an amazing element. It has so many facets. It can be fun and playful or energetic or totally hypnotic. And in designing with it, we learn mostly by doing, by immersing ourselves in water, by experimenting with it, by pushing the boundaries of where we can take it. And whether the projects we create are majestic in size or very intimate experiences, if we can make you pause and see water in a new light and discover its beauty and delight your brain at the discovery and touch you, then we feel that we've done something worthwhile. Thank you. <laughs>